So you want to be able to hide rows or columns based on a drop-down list. This solution will require some VBA code, which I will provide with this video. Let's see how this works in practice. If I select a payment type here, you can see that it only shows the relevant table. If I go back to all, it will show all of the tables. If I add another record to say the cash payments, I'll just leave it as a duplicate. You'll see that it will include that new row. The same works for columns. If I choose a payment type here, only shows the relevant table. Okay, let's see how this can be done. Now to create the drop down list, all I did in this example is I selected that cell, I went to the data tab on the ribbon, I went to the data tools group and I clicked on this data validation button. And you can see here, I've just typed in the values that I want to include in the drop down list. Now an alternative to that would be to type your options somewhere in your workbook, could be on another sheet. And then what you can do is select the cell again, where you want your drop down, go back to the same button, and then select the cells that contain the values you want to appear in the drop down. This example, I'm just going to keep it as it was with the values typed in the source box. Now, as I said, you will require some VBA code to apply this technique, and you'll find a link in the description of this video to the code. So copy the code, and then what you need to do is right click on the sheet tab and go to view code. That'll open up the visual basic editor, and all you do is paste the code into the code window, and it should end up looking like this. Now I'm just gonna close down the Project Explorer and walk you through this code. So the first thing I've declared here is the cell that contains my drop-down list. So I've declared that as pay type, and I've set it to range B2. So you, you need to set the address of your pay type variable to whatever cell you have your drop-down list in. And then you're going to need to declare a variable for each of the data sets that you have in your data. I have three, so I've declared three variables. You're also going to need to declare the correct number of variables for each of the headings you have in your data. As you can see, I've declared three there because I have three headings in my data. Then you need to set these heading variables. You can see how I've done that. Basically, I've searched for the cell that contains these text strings. So you need to put your headings in these brackets. Make sure you include those speech marks. So you need to do this for each of the variables that you've set up here. These lines of code you can leave as they are, and then we get down to this select case statement. Now, this part you can leave as it is, but then you're going to need a case for each of the options that you have in your drop down list cash, debit card, credit card. So within the quotation marks that I've got here, you're going to need to put the items that appear in your drop down list. So what it's going to say is if you've chosen cash in your drop down list, the first thing you're going to do is unhide any currently hidden rows. Now, set range one is the range of cells that you don't want to hide. And we've set that range by using the cell address that we found up here by searching for cash payments and then returning its current region. Now, that's the equivalent of clicking in a cell and doing Control A. And you can see it selects up to an empty column and row. Now, this line of code is going to hide all the rows in my sheet from row five downwards. Then I'm going to unhide the rows for the range that I've specified here. So essentially it's only gonna show the cash payments. And so I repeat that set of instructions for each of the options in my drop-down list. Okay, let's move on to hide columns. 
So again, what you would do is you would copy the code that I provided, then right click on the sheet tab and go to view code. And you need to paste the code that I've provided into the code window. And this is pretty much the same as the code we had for hiding rows. So here you need to add as many data sets as required. I've got three data sets, so I've got three lines of code. Also the number of headings. You need to put your headings in here, in the brackets and the quotation marks. And then you need to put the items in your drop-down list for each of these cases. And you can see that in these cases, instead of hiding rows, I'm hiding columns. And that's really the only difference. Now there's one more line of code that I'm going to put in both these macros. I'm going to put this after I've declared the pay type variable. And here's the line of code. Now to explain this line of code, I need to explain a little bit about how this macro will run. You're not going to need a button to run this macro or a shortcut key. This macro will automatically run whenever there is a change to the sheet. You can see this here. Worksheet change is the event that triggers this macro. Now you can see up here that the macro provides a way of referencing the cell that is being changed. We can do that with this word target. Now in this line of code, I'm basically saying if the target cell isn't cell B2, the pay type cell, then exit the sub procedure. And the intercept method is being used to do that. And what intercept does is it returns a range at the intersection of the ranges that you provide in the brackets. So I'm saying if there isn't an intersection or an overlap, then exit the sub procedure. And I'm going to put this line of code in both of the macros. Okay. Now, because we're using a VBA macro to achieve this, when you save your Excel workbook, you need to save it as a Excel macro enabled workbook. If you save it as a normal workbook, then I'm afraid it will not store the VBA code with the file. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully that's useful. If it is, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you next video.